Do I have statistics in my book? I can't remember. We're gonna cut this part out. I mean, I thought your answer was oh, good. Do you have the statistic in here? I'm so, I just put everything into my book, didn't I? All right, hit me, producer Potts. I'm always burning my food. Crispy, slightly burnt food is my favorite thing. So here's my question. Am I always destroying the nutrients or worse, causing a health harm by being a bad cook on purpose? And is there a reason that some of us crave burnt food? Oh, wow. Um, let's, let's break this down. So uh, browning is from a type of chemical reaction called a Maillard reaction. And it produces a, a variety of different types of chemicals that all the things that make uh, like the the crispy bits on your roasted vegetables or like the the beautiful sear marks on your grilled meat. So delicious. Uh, some of those compounds have been associated with uh, cancer. So some of those compounds have been shown to be carcinogenic. But. There's lots of things that decrease those properties. So for example, adding a uh, vinegar or spices, so literally just marinating your meat before grilling it will decrease the production of them. And spices and vegetables, especially cruciferous vegetables, so like Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cauliflower, kale, um, have compounds that actually like stop the, like, the way that it interacts with our biology, uh, it interferes with that. So it actually reduces the carcinogenicity. That is a long word that I can spell, but I don't think <laughs> I can say carcinogenicity. Uh, it basically makes it uh, so that it's not a problem uh, from a, a cancer perspective, which is the concern. So grilling foods, um, Yes, like if you were eating a diet that was predominantly grilled blackened foods and it was like a lot of meat, not very much fruits and vegetables, like that does increase risk of, of cancer, especially GI cancers. However, marinating the meat or vegetables, uh, adding spices, which of course makes it taste better too, and then eating lots of, of vegetables, like just having a high vegetable diet really like negates the concern uh, or at least most of the concern from those compounds. So the the signal is overall, if you're eating a healthy diet, is is not like statistically significant. So uh, it's a very small effect. I'm wondering if I have, hang on. I did put the statistic in my book and I'm feeling very proud of myself because there has yet to be a thing that I have needed to look up that my book doesn't have. So I'm feeling very proud of how, how comprehensive this is as a resource while being incredibly readable and fun. So um, uh, another another check in the pro column for, for going to get my book Nutribor. Uh, but the um, modest increased cancer risk is like two to 6% for highest consumers depending on the study. And that is looking at both of like the two main classes of compounds that have the highest like association with cancer and mechanistic, like they've, they've got studies where they give those compounds to animals and the animals get cancer. So those are heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. So uh, the cool thing is, here's the list of, of uh, herbs that have been shown to help reduce the production of them. So turmeric, garlic, ginger, rosemary, cinnamon, and chilies. All of those are delicious. That's spices. awesome. Okay. Um, and then cruciferous vegetables basically negates the effects once they're in our bodies. So two to 6% in the in the grand scheme of things, that was not a big increased risk to begin with and very easy marinating meat uh, or adding spices and or both. And then eating especially cruciferous vegetables regularly basically means that we don't need to worry about that. What's really fascinating is that also like the, the Maillard reaction produces some like sugar compounds that are gut bacteria like. So we actually have some like bacteria that live in our gut microbiomes that really like browned. Oh, they're, foods. they're happy with me then I'll tell yeah. you that. <laughs> um, so again, it's, it's, you know, like that, that, that series of chemical reaction produces lots of different tasty compounds, only a few of which have been linked to cancer. And again, can be 
uh, the risk can be mitigated by eating more vegetables and seasoning and marinating meat. And then other compounds that help to feed a healthy gut microbiome. So the craving part, that is kind of not related to it being tasty. Like it is, like when foods are, are really delicious to you, you will want to eat them more. But cravings mainly come out of associative learning. So it comes out of like, oh, I uh, maybe you had um, a lot of grilled foods um, at like fun summer barbecues with your family when you were young. Or, um, you know, it was like a time in your life where you were, you know, really like happy and carefree. And like that was a lot of the food that you were eating. Or um, maybe you always had grilled food on the same night that you had dessert. So you had that like association of like something you really like with this grilled food and that grilled food is now taken over as the positive association. So cravings tend to come out of associative learning. So a lot of that subconscious, you might never be able to figure out like what was, what was the thing that my body associated this flavor with a positive experience. But um, cravings are, are really complex and there's this sort of oversimplification that if you're craving something, you must be deficient in something else. That is very rarely the case. Cravings tend to come more out of uh, associations and it can even be associations with like the stress response in a comfort food. So it's not even necessarily like, I, I like this food, like I had this food when I was really happy. It can be, I had this food when I was really sad and the food made me feel better. Right. Mm. Like so even yeah, those types of associations. Yeah. Okay. So, so cravings are really complex, uh, and definitely more like psychology related rather than like nutritional sciences related. So my, my understanding is very surface. Um, but yeah, I would say there's, there's not a good other reason like biochemically to crave, uh, burnt food, burnt food. Fascinating. Uh, yeah. So some some deep childhood memories <laughs> need to need to surface, I guess. Do you hear that, mom? It's your fault. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a bad thing because I have to know thing. that producer pots also eats lots of vegetables. So I do. I do. Good. I do. It's all good. All right. Well, uh, this was really fascinating. I did not know that. And I think that's really good. Where else can people learn about like what nutrients like decrease our risk for, you know, this is great to know that we can enjoy that. And it does decrease the risk for those certain types of cancer. So where can we learn um, fun and interesting facts like that? I would say the best place to go would be my book, since that's where I went to remember what the statistic was. Uh, <laughs> so my book is called NutriVore. It's available wherever books are sold. Uh, check out your local independent bookstore and it might be at your local library. If it's not in either of those places, you can put in a request and they can get it in for you. Um, so this book is just absolutely, it's so dense. It's so chock full with little interesting tidbits like that. Um, and there's like a whole section on how phytonutrients reduce uh, cancer risk. Not the same thing as curing cancer. There's no diet that will cure cancer, but uh, we can reduce our risk of cancer. Again, it's not a guarantee, it's, re it's just reducing risk, not inoculating us, um, but it, there is like really substantial risk reductions from eating, you know, lots of vegetables is typically, fruits and vegetables are, are some of our like best foods from a cancer risk perspective. So uh, all of that is very uh, extensively laid out in my book. So I would say my book is the best place to go if you like fun facts and tidbits and uh, little statistics to pull out at parties like, did you know that that delicious burnt steak only increases my risk of cancer from like two to 6% and I don't even need to worry about it because I'm also enjoying Brussels sprouts. Uh, I, that's the kind of thing I would say to party, which is why I don't get invited to parties all that much. <laughs> Thanks, Dr. Sarah. Thank you.